Hey everybody and welcome back. So it's exciting to read the news and find out that the United States is opening back up again. So for anyone out there who is getting out of their house for the first time, who is getting back to work for the first time, I'm, I'm reading uh, messages from friends who are going for hikes and going to parks and getting to be outside and the weather looks like it's gorgeous. It's like 105 degrees here in the afternoon. So I am much more jealous of what you have right now than what I get to enjoy, where even if we weren't on a lockdown order, we would still be locked down because it's so uncomfortable outside. But as the United States is opening up, uh, it's exciting to me because the rest of the world usually follows the United States. So even though we just had some bad news about how uh, state of emergencies have been extended in multiple countries and travel restrictions have been extended in the country that we're in, the, the sign to me continues to be that the world will be opening up soon and our travel plans will continue. Maybe not as smoothly as, uh, as if there was no COVID-19, but we're, we're prepared for that. So uh, another update, I look a little bit like garbage right now, but that's okay, this is, this is the true me. Uh, I don't like to shave, so sometimes it gets long and my hair is growing out. You can't really see my, my daughter did my hair today with a nice black headband but I'm growing my hair out for a couple of reasons. One, it was very convenient not to cut my hair when there was no place to cut our hair <laughs> during the quarantines. But two, wherever we go next, I want to, is going to be some kind of European destination or another Arabic destination. So we're not going to, uh, we're not going to Latin America, we're not going to South America, uh, we're not going to East Asia. So I'm pretty sure that wherever we're going, the olive complexion, the dark hair, and longer hair is going to help keep me from getting a bunch of attention. So my wife, for those of you who have seen her pictures, does not look Caucasian. She looks like a mixed, like Asian, Latino. She looks very ethnic. My son already has crazy, long, gorgeous hair. You might see it here in a second because I'm gonna give you a quick tour of what we're doing right now. Uh, my daughter, though, is a straight up white baby. But if I look ethnic enough and my wife looks ethnic enough, maybe we can pass the story that we adopted a nice white child. I don't know, we'll see. But the, the purpose of this video is to talk about packing. So we are very much in the late stages of packing. We have a, uh, an appointment made in two weeks for our, our permanent uh, shipment to get sent back to the United States. And it's okay, welcome back baby geeks. My little girl is in here dancing and singing, so you'll definitely get to see her. Uh, but because we were able to finalize our shipping, we obviously then had to go through everybody's stuff and decide what was gonna get shipped back to the United States and what was going to come with us on an airplane. And remember, um, we are expecting to only be able to carry about 40 kilograms each on an airplane. Hey, do you wanna say hello, little one? This is my very Caucasian little girl. So we're gonna have to tell everybody that you were adopted. Is that okay with you? And it's so hard to find more pizza on it. It's too hard to see the Mickey Mouse on your shirt? There you go, is that better? Yeah. Okay, so that's it. So start practicing now. This is our adopted white child. We got her from who knows where. But here's what we plan to do. We have one closet dedicated only to the goods that we're going to be shipping back. So this whole closet really only contains what's gonna be sent back in our shipping container back to the United States. Everything else is gonna come with us on the plane. So what does that look like? What does everything else look like? We've gone through everything and what's whatever we're not going to take, whatever doesn't have immediate value to us is basically gonna be left behind. If it has long-term value to us, it's gonna get shipped. So that means that we're basically living with about this much stuff. Now, if that freaks you out, uh, that's okay. But remember, anywhere we go, we will always have the opportunity to buy more stuff. So the stuff that we need, the shirts and the socks and everything else is not much of a problem because we'll be able to get whatever we need anywhere we go. So it's okay to live on very little. Not to mention the fact that if you're anything like me, then you probably need to replace some of your stuff anyways. So it's kind of nice to go through, cut out all the chaff that you don't really need and then focus on what you do need. So if this is what we're taking with us that we're living out of right now, and back there in the closet is all the stuff that we're not gonna take with us, that's the stuff that we're gonna ship back to the US, then what is it, how do we know how much stuff we're actually gonna carry on the plane? And that's where I wanna show you next. So we'll take a real quick walk through the apartment so you can see everybody's rooms. Yeah, it's all nice. The disaster that is the living room. I don't know if your living room looks like this, but this is what my living room looks like, you know, pretty much all the time. Yeah. Here is 
the room where we plan on segregating all of our stuff that's going to be sent back, uh, or that's going to come with us in a bag. So here's how this works. We know that we have a certain weight that we can carry, and we know what the dimensions are for what we can carry. So we pull out all of the bags that we have so that we can start to measure their circumference, their weight, whatever else they need, uh, the diameter, the... Uh, as we pack them, we know exactly what bags we have left to pack. So now, when we go through all of our stuff, we're able to segregate it into stuff that's getting shipped home and, in, and segregate it also into stuff that's coming with us on the plane. And then we can pack what's coming with us in the plane, we can measure it inside of its bag, we can weigh it inside of its bag, we can allocate it to one of the people who has a paid ticket or who will have a paid ticket, and then anything that is within that weight threshold, we know we can carry with us and we keep here in the apartment. Anything that we know we can't carry with us has to be, dis we have to choose. Do we donate it, discard it, or do we ship it back to the United Daddy. States? So those are the options that we have. Hold on, baby cakes, I'm coming. If you'll excuse me. Daddy, me the other thing that's important is that whenever we travel around the world, we don't buy new furniture. We don't, we don't, want to pick places where we're going to have to invest heavily in the apartment or in a home or anything like that. So all of the stuff that you see around us right now, this is all furnished apartment rental. And sometimes a furnished apartment is kind of difficult to find, but it's something that we've found to be extremely important because when the time comes that you're ready to leave, you don't want to have to deal with where everything is going to go. So the closets that you saw in my room, the furniture that you see in the various bedrooms, everything that you see in the living room, all of that is furnished apartment stuff. So it makes it much easier to actually, you can see, we love America, we miss you USA, but this is my children's room. And you can see that all of this was in the apartment. So we don't like to move with a bunch of stuff. We don't like to have a shipping container with thousands of pounds worth of stuff following us six months behind wherever we go, we like to travel very light. A suitcase, two suitcases each, a total of 60 pounds or less at most. Uh, it still turns into quite a haul the day that you're at the airport, but it's so much easier to manage when you're actually in a specific place for either a known or unknown period of time. So when we came to UAE, we had some suspicions about the company that we were gonna work for. It didn't have a strong reputation of being consistent. It didn't have a strong reputation uh, of being good to its people. So we kind of knew that we didn't wanna invest heavily in the infrastructure that was going to support us here in UAE. So when we arrived in UAE, we intentionally looked for an apartment that was furnished, that we could rent. We intentionally rented a vehicle instead of buying a vehicle because we did the math and we realized that if we only stayed six months, if we only stayed one year, if we only stayed 18 months, it was going to be much cheaper and easier for us to get out of a long-term rental car lease than for us to try to deal with all the expenses that go from buying a car and then selling a used car. So we took these very deliberate steps because when you travel around the world, when you travel full time, every new opportunity is also kind of a new risk. So you have to assess them so that you always put yourself and your needs, your values, your intentions, and your purpose at the heart of it. So if you're thinking about travel, or if you want to travel, or if you have long wanted to travel, there is some reason behind why you wanna travel. You have to decide what that is. Because if you lean on someone else to make it happen, you lean on a contract, you lean on a company, you lean on a job, you lean on someone else, you become tied to whatever they do, their culture, their success, their needs. The best thing to do is stay as independent as possible. That's why we travel light. That's why we don't invest heavily in an in infrastructure until af after we are settled in, after our needs are met, after we are comfortable where we are. And we always kind of go someplace with adventure and discovery on the mind instead of long-term stability and long-term roots. Our roots are right there on the wall. You can see it, right? America is home. That's where we will go. That's that's who we are in our soul. That's who we are in our heart. But we are traveling the world because traveling the world helps us appreciate and understand our roots more than we ever did before. All right, that's all I have for today. More coming. Thanks.